Right, welcome everybody to Discover Dorico for August. Thank you for all for joining. Um, I'm not going to feature on the screen very much, but I thought while we do a quick audio test, make sure you can hear me and see me and everything else. Uh, if somebody can let me know in the chat, that'd be great. Uh, and uh, let's make sure they are. I can sit inside Dorico now. Um, a delay, somebody says. Uh, hopefully that's hmm, hopefully that's not me. Um, right. Uh, while you're uh, checking audio and everything else, in the bottom right corner, bottom left, right right corner for you, uh, there's a little cog icon. Make sure your video is set to 1080p 60 if possible, because that's the highest resolution. Uh, while I'm testing the audio, here is a uh, a new thing that's arrived um, for me to to try out. It's a silicon cover with all the Dorico shortcuts on. This is by kbcovers.com. Um, they're not sponsoring this. I just thought it, for, for people who might find this useful. Now, this is only for um, MacBooks, the, the most recent ones. So if you have um, a 16 inch MacBook or one of the new 13 inch ones, because you can see it's actually got an escape key option here and then a space for the touch bar. Um, so it fits very neatly uh, on, uh, on my MacBook Pro, which is good. Um, if you have another type of keyboard, it's not probably designed for that. KBcovers.com also have some physical keyboards. If you want a Mac keyboard or a PC keyboard with all the shortcuts printed on it and you want to plug that one in and use it, then they do that one as well. But uh, if you're interested, go and have a look at their website. I'll put a link under the video in the description after the session so you can have a look. Uh, so let me just check on the comments. Uh, people saying, looks like we're working. People from all over the, all over the world. Brilliant. So... In these sessions, I'm going to uh, answer some questions as we go along, if they're relevant to the topic. Um, I had a few comments by, about people saying, stay on topic. So if you're asking any questions and it's not about the topic we're talking about today, I will review all the questions and answer them at the end. So stick around. Uh, if I don't ask your, answer your question at the time of asking, then I'll, I'll, I'll do it at the end. If it's about the topic we're looking at, if I'm doing something and you're saying, oh, I need, need to know about that particular bit, then I'll answer it hopefully at the time. Um, but you can also email discoverdorico at steinberg.de. So at any time, uh, any time in the month, discoverdorico is all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Uh, and uh, you can send me an email. So today uh, I'll be using Dorico 3.5.10 if uh, it's a free update for version 3.5 users. Um, many of the things we're looking at will be also available in SE, Dorico SE and Elements, but um, some things do involve properties that are only in Dorico Pro. So if that particular thing that we're talking about at the time involves engraved mode, that kind of thing, it, then unfortunately it will only be in Pro, but a lot of this session I think will be available in other versions as well. And today we're going to be looking at drum lead sheets. So we're going to be looking at this sort of thing. I'm just going to get me out of the way. There we go. So we're going to be looking at this sort of thing. Um, this is um, an example file actually that was that was sent in by email. So uh, thank you for that, Evans. And um, this one, uh, sorry, uh, Evan Rogers. Um, this one is uh, I had a number of things in it that I think could possibly trip you up if you were doing this kind of notation. I'm not a drummer. Um, this is my take on drum lead sheets, I suppose. But the issues and potholes that I think you might fall into if you're using Dorico um, when you're doing lead sheets, because the issue is that drum lead sheets are made up of lots and lots of different little parts, bits of notation, implied pushes, cues, slashes, etc. Um, and I'm, I'm sure from lots of the comments we've had in the past that we, the Dorico team, will be able to simplify these things even more in future. But you want to make drum parts today, right? So I thought, let's look at how we can do all of these kind of things today and what are the things that would trip you up. In most cases, it's, I've got too many rests. How do I get rid of these extra rests? And that kind of thing. Because of the way Dorico puts drum parts together, a drum set staff of five lines is actually made up of multiple different instruments. And then you're probably adding other things like um, cues and slashes to that as well. And you can end up with an awful lot of voices and rests if... Uh, if you're not careful. So we're going to look at creating this today. Um, I'm going to start with a blank project. Um, so I'm just going to add a solo player. Uh, I'm going to type uh, drum just for drum kit and press enter so that I'm going to start here. So you can follow along now or later if you want to. Um, and uh, I'll try and uh, keep an eye on the, the, the comments and that kind of thing as we go. Um, the 
uh, the one thing I, I would also say is when you're starting these kind of uh, projects, and for the kind of things we'll be doing today, where we'll be tweaking some of the properties of individual things, in Dorico 3.5, be aware what your properties are set to. So down here in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, oops, wrong, wrong key, here we go. I, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a locally and globally, and you probably want to be on globally for this part of the, the, the project that you're doing, at least. Um, because you'll be setting things like potentially stem directions or you know whether things are visible and that kind of thing and you probably want the same in both the score and the part so therefore you probably want the global option so you probably want to make sure that's on uh, before you do anything else that's not to say if you change things and make them local that you can't change them later you can but you know for, for ease and for speed you might want to change that to start off with if you're following along uh, there's a couple of comments and questions already so uh, let's just have a quick check. Um, a quick question about drags, rough buzz rolls, 16th and 32nd rolls. Actually, not sure I am going to cover some of those in this session, um, but it's a, it is a good point. So let's see where we get to maybe um, near the end. Let's see. Um, because in this particular case, I'm going to basically be redoing uh, this, uh, this file um and you know various options that are in this one i don't think there are any in here so uh, but um let, let's see what we get to so i'm going to start off with um let's put some this in some time and add some bars so i've used the shift m meter pop over to put this in four four and the shift b pop over to add some bars um now I've uh, I, I will try also following along. I, I've made a, a whole bunch of notes on things that you might want to do. Um, so to start off with, for example, if you want to remove the gap at the beginning, now this is actually the score. You may well want to be working uh, in the part potentially uh, and making sure that the part looks correct. Um, so if we if we were to do that, then in the layout options, then if we have a look at the part as well, what we'll want to do is do things like the players section. We'll want to um, turn the multi rest off because I'll want to work on this part. Um, this indent at the beginning um, wasn't in the original file I was sent. So in staves and systems, the indent first system of flow, we want to put that to zero. Um, the bar numbers are also uh, above and they were underneath in the original I was sent. So if you go to bar numbers, then you can say show below bottom staff of system. And you can also, the minimum distance, if I just apply that first change, the minimum distance here can probably be closer if they're underneath. So probably put that on, I'm going to say one, but you know it, it could be more or less. And this will go up and down in increments as you change things. So um, those kind of things you might want to change. You may also, of course, if you haven't already, uh, you might want to turn off the flow headers. So they're in there in page setup. So those kind of things you might want to change. Also, the, the casting off this particular file um, has not quite completely four bars per system, but um, but the, you might want to use that as a, as a start. So in staves and systems, casting off, I think later we'll come and set this if we don't set it now, the fixed number of bars per system. Uh, but just so you know where it is. So let's get started with the, the music in this one. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so in the, the beginning here, I uh, double clicked obviously to get the carrot. And uh, actually the, the very first thing at the beginning is the, they've got a tempo marking, which is uh, straight disco. And then six equals 115, which will be a quarter note or a crotchet equals 115. Uh, if I'm entering notes at this point, uh, when I double click, I'll use a mixture of MIDI keyboard and not MIDI keyboard so that you can use whatever is suitable for you. Um, the, the first um, beat actually is a, is a big hit. So if you were to do it on a MIDI keyboard, it would be quicker and easier because you can press all three notes at the same time. Uh, and the notes I've pressed there are um, the C two octaves below middle C, the E above that, and the C sharp above all of that, uh, and that gives me the bass, the snare, and this crash symbol for, for that hit. So while they're all selected, I'm going to press the shortcut for the uh, accent, which is lit up over here as well. Um, now also in this particular file, they've got snare stems up. So I'm going to go to setup mode, and I'm going to change that. So edit the drum kit, edit percussion kit. We'll be in here a couple of times today. This snare drum here, I'm going to select stems up and press apply, and that will do this. So my snare is now stems up with the, the symbol. You can do that at, at any point and, and switch those over. 
Um, I said I wouldn't get sidetracked, but there's a quick question. Um, the key, the so that you can see the shortcuts I'm using when I do things like that. Um, this bar at the bottom isn't part of Dorico. I've got a little program up here called Mouse Bose. So that's showing me the shortcuts so that you can see, and it also lets me highlight things like this so you can see what's going on. So that's uh, Mouse Pose. Um, but uh, many other options are available. It's just the one I happen to have used for a while. Uh, this, these first notes here have a dynamic, so Shift D and uh, Fortissimo on there. And then the next bar has some slashes. Now, slashes don't exist by default in Dorico. Uh, in, in a, I mean, they don't exist in our uh, basic drum kit. So you have to go to setup mode. I said we'd be in here a few times. Edit percussion kit, and you can create slashes. Now, I need slashes with stems to start off with. So I'm going to create slashes with stems here, slashes with stems. And I need them on that center line, so that's OK. Now, in the original example, let me just flick to that. Here, we've got stems down. Um, and I probably have said before, so set the stem direction down. But actually, in this particular case, don't. Um, uh, leave them up. And I'll show, actually, I'll show you why. I'll set them down and we'll, we'll see what happens. So, because initially it looks fine. Uh, so I've set the stem direction, which you don't want to do. Um, and uh, now I can enter the slashes. So for this one, actually, what I'm going to do is when you double click, I tend to double click in the middle. It's just where I tend to double click. If I double click up here, of course, it would say Tom 1. But I tend to automatically double click in the middle. If you need to move the cursor around, just press the up and down arrow keys, and you'll hear all of the various drums as you get to them. And the slash doesn't know what else to do, so it gives you a woodblock. Um, so then I'm going to use the numbers across the top of the MIDI keyboard. So for example, 4. Uh, to set the note duration, and then I'm going to press Y, which is the enter default note. It, it, I don't need a particular note, so I'm going to press Y. So I'm going to keep changing the rhythms like this, use the space bar for a rest, uh, which won't display anything, of course, until I keep on entering more notes. Um, and then I'm going to keep doing this, so just using numbers at the moment. I'm used to using 4 and 5 for the, the note durations. I'm using the space bar for rest and I'm using Y every time I want to enter a note and this one will be dotted. Uh, now if you, you prefer the um, the pitch before duration method then you, you can use that one. Um, it's basically the same uh, key presses but in a different order. Um, this is the one I prefer so it's just the one I'm using. And at the end, so now here if you were just using you know, I'm, I'm tempted to use a MIDI keyboard and just reach out and go. But if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, then you would want to, for example, if you're at the bottom of the staff, uh, you can press F and you'll get a, a bass drum. You can press C and you'll get a snare drum. And uh, if you were in the middle here and you press A, then you'll get this floor tom. Um, if you are higher up in the staff and you press A, then you get the crash symbol. So it just depends where you are in the staff. So up here, A will give you that one. Down here, A will give you the floor tom. So it just depends, you know, uh, what you need to uh, what you need to enter. And of course, if you're on exactly the right symbol at any moment, you can press Y, and that will give you the instrument that you are currently selected or currently or the carrot is currently on. Um, so that's. You know, an, another I input method option for these notes, and I'm actually I'm going to select them all. I'm going to put these accents on. If you have um, um, notes that are beamed like this as well, you can select the beam uh, and then uh, add accents and things that way should you need to. Now, now you see what happened. I've got a rest here because these slashes I put in a down stem voice, and everything was going smoothly until I put these notes in in an up stem voice. And Dorico said, mm, "Okay, in that case, you ought to put a rest in here," and I don't want that. So that's where I said, actually, although I may have said before, set your stem direction in here for the slashes. Actually, maybe you don't want to do that. If you set the stem direction and voice as stems up, it means that it's an up stem voice. Um, and it's kind of a bit like voice one or the first voice or the, you know, the, the first option, um, which will give you, therefore, you know, less rests overall. So it may be that, that what you want to do here is actually leave these in the primary first up stem whatever you prefer to call it depending on the um, notation program you've you're used to using um, but use the least number of voices possible that's the kind of end goal really with with Dorico here and um, but because then you can select this whole bar and you can just press F and flip them over and they're still in the same stem same voice but they happen to have the stems in the other direction so uh, that's one that I may not have looked at or told you before um, 
that actually I think potentially has tripped a few people up uh, when they didn't realise. Uh, you may also want to do something with uh, with uh, some of these uh, accents and things and allow them in the staff or not. And you'll find that's in uh, engraving options in articulations if you want to do those kind of things. You can specify whether or not some of these things are allowed in the staff, how far away from the staff they are and that kind of thing. So if you want to move them and sit them slightly above, then you can automatically. Uh, that was the next bit. Welcome to anybody who's just said I'm I'm late to this. Um, you're not. You can go back at any any moment. No worries, no problem at all. Thank you for joining. Um, what I would uh, also say, of course, is if you you're not used to it from uh, uh, from Sibelius and from Dorico, is uh, when you're copying and pasting, you can select, for example, a whole bar here, and you can just Alt click in another bar when you need mostly the same thing again. This one actually has a change at the end, so I'm just going to delete the last few beats there. Um, turn the carrot back on with the enter key, choose the right duration. Um, I need some tuplets in here. I'm just going to press Y because I'm already on the slash. Uh, turn the tuplet off and put the last one in. There we go. And then I will just need to select the beam here and press F again just to flip those over so that I've got them all the right way around. Um, now in the next bar, we also have some slashes. Let me show you the original. We're over here now. So in this one here, we also have some slashes, but they're no stems and they're raised and there's a bass drum underneath. So the bass drum obviously is easy because uh, in this one here, I can just press uh, F. Oh, wrong part of the staff, of course. A bit lower in the staff. I've got too many things on an F. Um, that's where I really do prefer a MIDI keyboard because you know that's the exact key and is going to give you the you know the, the right option. So using a MIDI keyboard here, it doesn't matter where you are in the staff, you can just press the low C and you'll get your uh, bass drum. Uh, and in fact, I need three bars of that, so I'll put another one in. Now for the slashes, so you could, there's multiple options you could do here. I know some people would say, well, I need slashes and they're on the kind of the, the D line here. You could use a you know, tom tom instrument, change the note head, turn the stems off, but they would be in the wrong stem direction as well, so they would be joined to the bass drum, so probably don't do that. Um, I, I'm going to give you a few options, hopefully, for some of these things, just in case you think, my case is slightly different, what are my other options? So that, that might be one, it's a little bit slow maybe, um, um, and this case won't do what we want. Um, I probably would make a slash voice, um, so if I make a, a slash voice here without stems, and I've got a couple of options here. One, I could put it on the right line so that I've got a slash uh, voice up there, but I'd also look at how often you're going to want these and how often they're going to be in that position. You can make a, another slash voice and you could have one up here and one lower down if you wanted to, but you can also move some of them uh, if there's only a few that you need to put in a different position. So let's look at that option. How about I create one here so that I now on the center line have a, uh, a, a slash here, um, which is, and I see it says SL1 and SL2, and it would be nice if you could label those. So I, I normally would, so I can tell they were very clear what's going on. So if you choose, you see here it says slashes with stems one, slashes without stems two. So this is slash one and slash two. I'd like to label them. So if you go to edit names, this is where if you were using the staff labels, you would use these, but actually we don't need the staff labels. I would change the first one, the, the full name, because although that doesn't display, it affects the labeling. So if I put, um, this, is, um, this is slashes stems, um, then it will remove the numbering. So let me just show you that. Slashes stems means that now the numbering has disappeared, so now it will, it, it will not have to show me a number. And if I change this one, which is the short one, and say SL stems, uh, and I'm going to do the, with this one, I'm going to say SL no stems. Uh, you said don't see anything different really here, but when you're entering music over here, I'll move along a bit. You can see now the little orange option here is doesn't have a number anymore because they edited the full label. And the short label, the short uh, name, is what's displayed here. So SL no stems and stems. So now I can tell exactly which one I'm on. Um, the uh, Yes, sorry, just reading the comment for a second, but that's okay. Uh, another option for showing... Um, Yes, keycaster. Yes, for showing keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so we've got sn uh, slashes, no stems, and slashes, stems. So I, c I want slashes, no stems. I can press Y, 
and enter these slashes. Now they're not in the right place in this particular one. So just for this particular example, actually, what I'm going to do is select these notes. I'm using uh, command, as you can see, to select those. In the properties panel, you can move them if you want to. There's a slash position here. So you can turn this option on and you can move the slashes if you need to. So now without making too many extra voices, if some of the slashes just need to be in a different position, that might save you making an entirely new slash voice, maybe, um, uh, and you know, and, uh, setting where things need to be. So that could potentially be uh, a useful option for some people. Um, and again, what, you know, once you've once you've um, entered a couple, use Alt click and put them in other places. So I can you know Alt click these to other places depending on where I need them. And the properties, the slash position, will also get copied with those. So that that might be a useful option. As I said, the other option is of course you can um, put the slashes here. You can put them wherever you want to. So if you want to drag them to another position and make that the normal kind of zero position, then you can do that as well if you want to. Uh, in this bar here. Um, we're gonna, we need a couple of extra notes at the top, so I'm going to show you the original. I'm looking at this bar here, bar six, um, and what we have here is is some uh, notes above, and they're you know on our drum kit they're on the hi hat line, but basically they're pushes, they're cues, aren't they? So the, there's a couple of ways again that you can you can do this. You could use cues. Um, you'll know if you've looked at a previous session, and I'll link to it in the description that cues don't work by default in Dorico on drum kits um, for complicated technical reasons, but you can make them work if you kind of if you copy and paste things and, and put them in that way. So in some cases, nothing you know, nothing wrong with that. I would sometimes use that. Um, but there is potentially another option you could use as well, which is if you again edit your drum kit for the hi-hat up here, because that's on the right line. And some people would use the ride cymbal uh, line or you know have them in different places. But for the, the instrument that's on the right line or space, edit the percussion playing techniques. And here you can see we've got an X note head. So that will be, uh, you know, that will be the standard note head for the hi-hat there. If I click plus, I can add a new one. It doesn't really matter what the playing technique combination is because I'm not going to use it for playback. So I'm just going to choose the one at the top of the list that happens to be accent. You can make anything you like. You can even make a new one in here that says Q if, if you want to, if you want to be correct. I'm just going to use the one that says accent. And by default, Dorico will assign the normal note head. So the note head here is unset. So it's just the normal default note head. Um, you have a couple of options here. You could choose a different note head if you wanted to. So if you wanted to use uh, you know, a slash note head for those or a, you know, a diamond note head or anything else, you could use that. What you might want to do, if you use these a lot, um, you might want to make a new note head set of some smaller note heads and assign that in here so that every time you use that, you get a smaller note head. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you a different option again. But you, you may want to do that. Um, if you want to do that, you would need to use Dorico Pro because you'll need to use engrave mode and the note head editing uh, options to make a new note head that's smaller. Um, but you know th th that is an option. I'm going to do it, uh, it with a different method. So uh, so I'll, I've assigned a note head here, and that exists for the hi hat. So now when I uh, go to enter some notes up here, if we go up to the hi hat. If I press Alt, or on some people's keyboards it's Option, but Alt up, then instead of entering hi hats, if I press Alt down, I'll get hi hat accent, which is the new one I've, edit, uh, I've added. So now, if I just uh, choose the right note value with four, and then press uh, Y, I can add a couple of those hi hats with the new uh, note head type. There's a couple of rests I need, and a couple more notes. So now you can see here. Now what I've got is the, um, the you know the, the all the right options for these type of note heads. And what you might want to do is to um, uh, to use these ones. And now, or I would potentially do it at the end, um, then uh, and do it for lots of them all at the same time. Is use the properties panel, and you can use the custom scale option or the scale option. I would use the scale normally. And I would set them, for example, as Q size, which will make them smaller. Now, I'll just turn that off again for a second. The reason I'd say I'd normally do it at the end is that if you have this coming up in a few places, and yes, we'll, we'll sort the rest out in a minute. If you have these coming up in, in a few places like this, 
um, then what you might want to do is do them all at the same time. So now what I'm going to do is go to layout options for players and percussion and I'm going to change to single line instruments temporarily and the reason I'm going to do that is that now you can see my hi-hats are all on the same line. In fact, if you put this in, in uh, galley view, you can see they're all uh, all in the same line. So now it's very easy to choose all of these. Now, yes, if you had some standard hi-hats as well in the middle, you might want to command and deselect any bars that you know had standard hi-hats in, but you can make a bigger selection. Um, it, it's instead of you know filtering, you don't need to filter these hi-hats, you can just select them this way. And now you can change the size of them. So now you can change the scale and change them all to uh, Q size, for example, all at the same time. And then when you go back to layout options and go back to five line stuff, then you can apply that and put them back and you'll have Q size notes in all of those places. So you don't need to filter the drum kits um, because in many cases you can make the changes in setup mode for for that particular instrument or with that particular note head. But for sizes like this, then uh, you probably want to do it that way, where you can just change the size in the properties panel. And of course, you should be able to do that in Dorico Elements as well. Um, so let me uh, carry on. So in the next bar here, um, in fact, yes, we're going to talk about some of these rests. I'll, I'll do that, in fact, in, in the next bar as well. So in the in the next bar, um, what I've got is uh, a couple of um, rhythms on drums, so I'm going to put those in with the MIDI keyboard, just for speed, like this. And then the next two beats want to be slashes, and I'll uh, show you what happens and what's happened in the previous one as well, really. So the slashes, no stems, if I choose that one and press Y, I get this, and I get all of these, you know, all of these extra rests. I, I don't really want any of this, of these extra rests. So what I would say to do in, in this uh, case is don't put the slashes in that way. Select the beats, in this case it's handily one rest. Use the Shift R popover and type slash, and that will put a slash region in. Now normally a slash region is probably an entire bar or multiple bars, but actually it can be just one beat if you want it to be. So now here I've just got a slash region, which is just two beats. And handily, because they don't add rests, they actually hide everything else that's behind them as well, uh, which we'll do, again, uh, do in a second, then I um, it's hiding the rest that was there behind the slash region. In fact, if you, if you do this kind of thing, then you go, look, there it is, it comes back. So it's kind of hiding behind there, and it's not adding any extra rests in the rest of the bar. So what I, I would you know um, seriously look at, and this is one of the options I do, using slash regions for some of those with the Shift R popover. The next couple of bars are more kind of, if you like, standard actual um, drum notation, but uh, they've got some hi-hats, which if you use a MIDI keyboard, and you can do this. Ah, yes, that, that, that could trip you up as well. The first note that I entered on the hi-hat there, if I show you, because I'd entered previously entered, if I go up here, hi-hat with an accent, the first note would enter with an accent. So you want to just press Alt down to get back to standard hi-hats. If I use the MIDI keyboard, I can press F sharp, and I can use, uh, oops, I need the right note value. <laughs> would help, wouldn't it? Uh, I can use F sharp to enter um, eighth notes, and I can you press B flat um, to enter open hi hats. So you can do this. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, then you can get tripped up by open hi hats, um, and I'll explain why. So in the next bar here, let's not use a MIDI keyboard. So if I was to just say, for example, up here, if I just enter press Y to enter, oh dear, I should enter the right rhythm, shouldn't I? <laughs> there we go. And then you want to put open hi-hats here. You might want to use the shift P playing techniques. And if you type open, here is a whole interesting um, option, bunch of options, including three opens. And which one is the right one? And it all gets a, a, a bit confusing. I just want an open hi-hat. So if you do use that uh, popover, what I would suggest is at least once. Come and have a look. See, there's, there's an open there. See, open exists as harmonic symbols in some cases. It exists as open fingering on woodwind. It, as you know, it can be, um, you know, things to do with mutes and you know all sorts of things depending on the instrument. So, um, so here in our pitch percussion section, we have here the symbol for open, and this one is the one that will play back correctly. But that's the one you want to access from the popover. So what I would do is press this little pencil edit playing technique option. It will choose the right option for you because I already had it selected over here. And just change this to something else. I quite like hi-o. It's hi-hat open. 
and it's just three letters that you know mean I can hopefully type the right thing. Now sometimes short options can trip you up later, but I, that that one um, uh, I, I think will be good. So I can now, if I was to be doing this from the popover, then I can just type hi o and I'll get the right option and they will play back. And once I've got one, I can use alt click to click it into the other places. And I if I don't need to for this one, so here we've got but in the original file, they were also using this for closed uh, to show you closed on those. So I can enter that one and I can then click it into the other places that I need it because I just need a couple of bars of the, the rhythm. Uh, I also down here need to put in the uh, bass and snare. So I'm going to use a MIDI keyboard for a second just for speed. Uh, actually, that one needs to be down there. Um, and if you're getting tied notes, then uh, and as I'm sure you've seen me do before in these sessions, you go to notation options, which is command shift N, go to percussion and truncate to shortest duration. And that will remove the ties and the drum parts. And then if you just want to copy these notes into the next bar, then just do a, a little drag uh, selection here and press R and that will copy just the selected notes into the next bar. Uh, now the next couple of bars uh, we need, we uh, we need slashes. You can also make them play back. So if I take this bar, this whole bar, and press R and repeat it a couple of times, these three bars actually we just want slashes. So you can select the bars, do Shift R and type slash, and the slashes will hide the notation behind, but they'll still play back. However, you'll find that here your playing techniques will still appear. So what you'll then want to do is select these marquee drag why not and in the properties panel there is an option for hidden for playing techniques which will hide all of those and then if you get all of these you know it's trying to show you all of the flags then i have a shortcut as i'm if you've watched any of these sessions before i've set my own shortcut for view uh, signposts for hide signposts so uh, in the properties in dorico you can set yourself your own shortcuts for things and hide all signposts is one that, that i use quite a lot as just a global option I'm aware I have, um, let me just, I, I might have missed any comments, bear with me a second. Oh no, not doing too badly. Um, the popover confusion, potentially yes, um, we, we may be able to, uh, to change that. The, the, the challenge is, um, if you're using an instrument and you want an open, then you probably want to type open. Um, so at the moment, at least, we do give you the flexibility that you can change the popover text and you can put in there whatever you want to be in there. But yes, at the moment, there are multiple opens. So uh, yes, we might be able to do something about it in the future. But uh, I think, as I said at the beginning, you want to do these things now. So here's how you do them now. Um, so uh, this one also had some text under it, which said, uh, sorry, um, Shift X, I mistyped then, and they want to say, uh, what did it say? Disco groove. There you go. Uh, and if you need to flip text, click on it, press F. The same with the stem direction. So we've now got those three bars sorted. So uh, in the next one, oh yes, there was only one little thing in the next one. So let me just stick some notes in for this so we can see what we're doing. And what did we have here? Um, oh yes, I remember. Um, we had a dotted eighth rest and then we had that. Um, on the original these were all beamed together. Um, so what you want to do is select these three notes, not that one, uh, right click and go beaming and beam together and it will beam all those three together. I don't think there's a notation option that will do that for percussion so you'll want to use that uh, beam together option and if you use it a lot if you're setting beaming things that aren't what Dorico is normally giving you again go to the, the preference the preferences so up here Dorico preferences or on Windows it's edit preferences isn't it and then you can go to key commands and you can search for the thing you want so for example if you search for beaming then you can add yourself a, uh, a reset beaming or if you just search beam beam together uh, you can set yourself a shortcut for that. So if it's something you use a lot, just set yourself a shortcut for it so it's speedy for you to use. Uh, the next few bars, uh, oh yes, I remember what tripped up in this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think, or four slashes. So that's fairly easy. What you might want to do is, if you don't want these numbers by default, yes, you can turn them off from the property panel. Um, but if you, you also can do it in engraving options. Uh, and if you look for uh, repeat uh, repeat markers, repeat 
no, no, not repeat count. Um, sorry, it's the slashes, isn't it? What am I doing? Somebody tell me what I'm doing in the comments. Um, the wrong thing. Yes, I know. Um, so you've got various options in here and the appearance of uh, the slash region bar count. If you don't want that most of the time, then choose do not show. Uh, there are various other options for where it shows and everything else, uh, you know, and, uh, and slow, you know, when, how often you see it and that kind of thing. But if you just don't want it, which we don't in this file, turn it off globally. It'll be far quicker than faffing around with all of the other options. Um, let me quick check on the. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm just um, replying to the comment. So um, there's also then a line. So let's just have a look here. There's a fill line here. You could, if you use this one a lot, you could make yourself a new line that says exactly that. Um, but I don't know, maybe I don't come across this exactly the same one often enough to want to do that. So I tend to edit one of the existing ones. Um, but also uh, kind of here's one of the things that can trip you up. When you select a slash region, so let's say I, you know, I think I've selected these and I go to the line section and I choose the line I want, then it puts in this really big line because the slash region, you know, it's done it all the way to the end of the slash region. Now you, you can, you know, edit this and, you know, if you want to, and you can use um, alt shift and you can, you know, move, move them around if you want to and that kind of thing. But my uh, tip when you don't want really long lines created and then have to zoom out and find where they've gone to and everything else, select the bar line here and then create a line. And it only makes a little version of it. Um, and then you can use Alt-Shift and you can edit it to be where you want to be. So the line wanted to be that long. And then the Properties panel, you can use... And if you don't want to make an entirely new line for this, you can just use the Text option. Uh, and you can just say uh, the, the bracket fill that it wanted. You can use the uh, Text Position here. It's got above and below and things. But the Text Placement will give you Start. And you see here, there's a very slight extra line at the beginning that you don't want. So what you want is the start end gap here. And when you just turn that on, it says zero spaces. So there you go. You've now got the fill line um, a, uh, exactly as they had it in the original there. And I've, I've just used one of the, the, the stock lines. Yes, if you, know, if you use this a lot then in multiple pieces, then create yourself a new line. But I tend to make one like that exactly how I need it. And then alt click it to the other places when, whenever I need it. So. Uh, I, I do it that way. Um, what was the uh, the next option I wanted to look at? Oh, I sp mm, no, I think that was okay. Um, there was an uh, an option I wanted to just say when you're using um, slash regions. Sometimes you might have a slash region, especially if you're using the numbering option. So uh, now I've turned it off globally. I'm just going to turn it on for a second. Uh, so we can see what's going on. If, for example, you needed a new slash region, so let's say this one was slightly longer and you needed to start again, um, then you can also use the, just select somewhere in the slash region where you want it to start again. And you can press U, which is the, the split command that you might also use sometimes for ties and for various other things. It's this scissors here. Um, but U will then split it. So now you can see I've got two slash regions in slightly different colors and the numbering has restarted. Um, but in, in this case, like I said, actually, I, I don't need the numbering at all. So I'll just toggle that off. Uh, any questions about? No, oh, we're doing OK. So either this is all OK or, um, you know, there's there's, there's no questions. Um, so uh, let me just have a quick look at some of the other bits that we might have in here. Um, I think that's kind of, you know, m most of the you know, things that you you might come up against and, and might want to to look for um at least for these kind of lead sheet type things um where you know if we just going back to the beginning here you know you you've got some cases where you know you want to use a, a slash region here you've got some cases where you'll need pr you know some bits of notation and accents and things but it's normally when these kind of things mix and it's using the least number of voices uh, and that kind of thing and uh, and how you uh, how you sort some of those kind of things out. Um, also, playback is sometimes, you know, do, do you want things to play back? So here, when we said Disco Groove, this bit here will still play back because underneath this slash region, I put the notes in first. I copy and pasted these notes in, and you remember we hid the playing techniques. So they will still play back, and sometimes that's uh, you know useful that, that that's a useful thing that you want to do um also sometimes when you're doing things where you're using these um 
hi-hats, for example, to notate things on using the hi-hat accent because it had a, a, our normal note heads in it. Sometimes when you're doing this kind of thing, um, in fact, I'm going to put, uh, I've, there we go, um, you will find that you, you know, these will also then play back. And sometimes that's actually more useful in the file. In that case, sometimes I use the ride symbol for that because it's a, you know, a, a slightly more useful accented, you know, something I want to actually use for playback in the Dorico file as well. So sometimes that's a reason not to use the cues option in here because of course the cues wouldn't play back. So, you know, sometimes when you're doing these lead sheets, playback is also nice as well as getting them to, to look exactly correct. So uh, hopefully that will help. Um, let me just check, bear with me for a second. I've got a, a couple of notes, see if I've missed anything. Uh, no, we did that bit, we've done that bit. Um, if there are any questions at this point, <laughs> I can see Dave just retracted his message, fair enough. Um, show how to hide rests. Um, Dennis, the answer is basically you, you can't really hide rests. Um, use the least number of voices. In fact, hang on, earlier on here, you know, use the least number of voices. These slashes that I put in here, um, because they're e effectively in an extra voice, it's giving them you know, these extra rests. So sometimes what you will need to do is, you know, for example, here, I think actually in this case, if I go to um, percussion, change voice, and change them to an up stem voice one, it will get rid of the rests. Obviously, they're wrong note heads. Let me just go back. I'll show you a few options. There's also an uh, extra up stem voice, an extra up stem voice here. See, so give me rests here for the, the uh, for these hi hats, but the extra voices don't add extra rests in here. So there's two options here. You could use an extra voice if you want this rest, and if you don't want any rests, use the least number of voices. Therefore, use up stem voice one you know, as much as possible to fill in those options. Now, these notes now are in the wrong position, unfortunately. So, you know, you th th that's where you, 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 this th uh, is going to, you know, fall down. You would probably need to, in these with these particular two cases, in fact, let's actually use the TomTom -tom, uh, line here. So if we put two notes in, in there... Ah, no, I know what I did. I know what I did. Uh, this is where I really do want to use, the I think, the slash in the right place. So here's a, you know, the I uh, use, uh, because I was showing you how to move these ones and move them up to a different slash position. In this particular file, I think I would also have another slash voice without stems here. Um, and I would, you know, I would move one so that it was sat on the right line, probably edit the name as well to say, you know, this is the slash uh, no stem, you know, you can label it as much as you want. It's the higher version for me, so I'm, that's what I'm going to call it. You know, you you, you uh, adjust your labeling as you need. Oh, I didn't move it and then press apply, did I? There we go. So now I have a you know another slash up here as well as the one down here. So I can enter a couple of notes here. Oh, it says you're choosing the wrong one. Well done, me. And then you still may need to, m unfortunately, these are a bit of a faff. I would change them to an up stem and also change the note head to... Now, our standard slash note head, if that's what you're using, is an oversized slash note head. Um, so you can do this. And, unfortunately, these now have stems. So in this one bar for these couple of beats, I'm also going to need to switch to engrave mode. So this is pro only, unfortunately. And I'm going to need to turn off the stems like that. So now, I, acknowl I acknowledge this is a faff, th this bar. All I'm telling you is it is possible, but it is a faff. So to recap, I've had to make a slash voice in the right place. I could have made any instrument, actually. I could have put the tom-toms if I wasn't using them in the right space. I could have made a new tom-tom there. Doesn't matter. Something on the right space on the staff in an up-stem voice, by which I mean here, edit percussion kit. These here are up-stem. So because we want the least number of voices possible and we want to make sure we're always using at least an up stem voice somewhere. So so they are an up stem. And then I've had to not only change the note heads on them to put them back to slashes. Um, I guess you could maybe make an instrument with slashes in the right place. That would be another way of doing it. So like when we did the hi-hats, you could make an instrument you know, with the slashes in the right place. And I've then had to go to engrave mode and turn the stems off. So yes, 
it's a bit of a faff for two beats but to get them you know to get them to be right I, that's what i would potentially do these could potentially be the same but they're not this is a slash no stem high two and this is a slash no stem simply because this is an entirely different bar and doesn't involve these other notes as well so you know but you can't ha at the moment use hide rests yes as i said at i think at uh, the beginning of the session there are some things we would love to come back to on drum notation and make some of these a bit easier but you want to do this stuff today so i'm telling you how we can do it in dorico 3.5 today and then we'll leave the Dorico team to do more magic later to make some of these even easier later. Um, what's the US terminology for a faff? <laughs> Kludge. Well, uh, ask somebody um, in, in the U. It's a faff. I'm sure it, that, that will translate well enough. So, um, you know, there, there's a few other things that, you know, you, you, you may also want to do. So, for example, at any point in a bar, if you use the, uh, you know, if you're adding a hairpin, uh, you know, you can then use a space bar to extend it. And if you, you'll notice when I, if you just collect, se selected the slash region, you know, you get a very large hairpin for the whole slash region. That's not what you want. So double click. So you've got your carrot line somewhere. Here's the carrot line. Uh, press the hairpin, which so um, in my case, it's a uh, shift comma, of course. Nothing looks like nothing happens. Press the space bar, you know, and you can you can then extend it as much as you need. Now I've pressed it wrong and then extended too far, but you can also enter other dynamics and things in the same way. So you can, you know, you can still do, you know, these kind of things as well if you need to. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, I'm extending notes over here now. You know, you, so you you can do things in the middle of um, uh, slashes. The first one I did was a small hairpin, and these ones are larger hairpins. You know, you still have options for those, but slash regions are quite a large, you know, section. So this slash region knows it starts here and ends here, but you still can, you know, create things as and when you need them. Um, and the length you need them, I suppose, importantly. Uh, we looked at the lines we've looked at. I think in this particular part, we've looked at a whole bunch of options. So um, I'm just going to check some of the other uh, uh, comments for this. Could, would it be useful to have a hide element feature for any element like in Sibelius MuseCore or at least have it for rests? In, in other instruments, not drum instruments, you can select a rest and you can use edit remove rests. It's a, a specific feature for removing rests. It doesn't work in drum notation because drums are actually made up of multiple instruments and it's kind of, if you like, I suppose sort of condensing them down onto one staff and trying to work it out. And at the moment, for percussion instruments, it doesn't necessarily get it right and shows you too many rests. So that remove rests thing doesn't really work because if you like, that rest isn't really there. It's just sort of kind of implied by Dorico. So what we do is we just make sure we're using the least number of voices. But yes, for other instruments, you would just use remove rests. But for, for drums, that one doesn't do that at the moment. Um, and for other things, you know, hiding things always seems like a fake, you know, like a, you know, trying to get around something. And I know I have used it in a couple of cases here. I have used hide elements and hide properties for a couple of the options here for occasionally for stems and for, you know, for playing techniques and things. But, you know, we, we kind of try not to if possible. Um, so there's a, uh, there's a couple of messages retracted. Uh, let me just see if there's any other comments about this one. Um, and is there anything I missed? I don't think so from my notes. Bear with me a second on the comments. Uh, so we uh, no, I answered that one. Uh, writing bongos for two lines and assign a note to each line. Um, that one basically happens by default when you normally when you add bongos but it's quite different to this one so maybe we'll look at that in a different se uh, session but Demetrius if you need to know soon uh, you know you want to know right now just email me uh, discoverdorico at steinberg.de um, and I'll uh, sort that one out for you I think that's it uh, so far on comments on that one so um, I suppose what I should just do is kind of say look, I, I really did finish you know get a, a fair way into this part and switch out of uh, out of that mode um, I suppose I haven't haven't finished it yet, but I've kind of tried to cover multiple bits of 
different sizes of note heads, mixing slashes and non-slashes. All of these green regions, if you're wondering, they're all of the, the slash regions. You can turn off the, the highlight for slash regions if you don't want them, if you don't want to see them. But I think you'll find when you're actually creating this stuff, it will be very useful to see the slash regions. Um, I haven't used cues in this case. Uh, I said I'll link to the video where we look at uh, potentially using cues, because you could do that for some of these sections up here, should you want to. Um, and I think that you know, for, for for this style, that should hopefully get you, uh, you know, a, a long way in. So if you now find something and say, this doesn't work in this particular case, how do I do this one? There was one on Facebook earlier, which I I, I think hopefully we have now answered. Then uh, please drop me a line, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. If there's any other uh, you know, cases and examples of things you want to create, uh, and uh, um, we can look at that one not only uh, now, but of course you know uh, as we change Dorico in the future. Uh, and hopefully make even some of the drum notation even easier um, th than it is now. So uh, let's. Um, I will stay on for a, a couple of minutes and answer any of the the questions in the comments. Um, would there's a quick one now? Would the same principles apply with a group of instruments played by a single percussionist in an orchestra band? Mm, um, some of them, but often no, because you m normally have more instrument changes then rather than. Um, you know, lots of instruments in a kit. So it depends how you're notating them. I suppose if you're notating them all on one five-line staff and they're playing multiples, yes, potentially, uh, that that would come up. Um, but otherwise, um, potentially, no. Uh, so it, it really depends on exactly how you want those to display. Um, you know, if it's if it's made up of lots of percussion instruments, like a drum kit is, by which I mean. Know, if you've got this kind of setup with lots of instruments on different lines, then yes, the same kind of things will apply. Check the stem directions for things. Make sure you're using an up stem voice, you know, as as much as possible. Use F to flip stems if if necessary. Um, but if you've actually got you know multiple instruments down here for a percussion player, um, then yeah, that that would probably be quite different. And there's a, another session we did at least a year ago, I think, on kind of assigning, especially then multiple p pitched and unpitched uh, instruments and how you switch between those. So uh, that would be a different one. Um, there's a question from Dave about notating flans. I s think as far as I'm aware, says the not drummer, um, you would be using, so for example, whether it's a snare drum in here or in a five line staff or single line staff um, you would use the the um, little slash key in the bottom right hand corner of the keyboard uh, to get effectively grace notes and when you turn so when I just use Y to, to enter notes like this so I choose the note value and I press Y uh, and then I turn them off with the, that slash key mine has a question mark above it uh, and then I can press that and get you know the, the normal note head and if I don't want these um, stems you can do it after the effect you can do it down here in the properties panel with the grace note type because they're effectively grace notes um, and if you want it as you're doing things then when you, you could press slash and you get you can see over here I have a little slash if I press alt slash then it will turn off the, uh, the, the slash through the stem there so now when I put one of those notes in I uh, oops I was on the slash of on the snare drum. Uh, so now I won't get a slash on the stem uh, and then I can turn it off and I can put another note in like that. So it's basically your slash key which for me on my keyboard is uh, on the right hand side of the keyboard is the key to the left of shift uh, and that slash key has, uh, and it looks like this um, will toggle on and off this item over here which is your grace notes option you can see actually it says there grace notes slash so that's how you toggle on and off as to whether the next note is going to that you enter is going to be uh, a slash or not um, I think Dave I did a, a quick example for you the, the other day where you, uh, you had multiples so you had for example when you turn the slash on uh, if I press um, yeah, if I press four and enter a few of these notes, oh, I'm doing a slashes again. See, I always click in the middle of the st the, the staff. Why do I do? I, I don't know. It's just where I where I click. I can enter multiples like this, and then I can turn them off and enter the the next note. Wrong place in the bar, really. All of these, aren't they? Let's Alt move those to the right. And if you select these, uh, I think you said 
some I can't remember which way around. I think these you don't want the the, the, the slash on, so you can turn them off later. But if you do want them, then you you know you can turn them on and off from the properties panel. So you know you can enter multiples of those, no problem. You don't need to use tuplets for this kind of thing. You just enter multiple grace notes. Um, the other thing is I the beginning of the file. If the very beginning of your file starts with grace notes, they are officially before beat one. So to get them to play back, you'll need to go to the playback options, which is Command Shift P, or if in play mode, it's uh, in play, it's just in the menu in playback options. There's a timing section here, and you will need a pre-roll before the flow. So you'll need to add a pre-roll of let's say a second or something before the flow starts. Otherwise, you won't hear the the flam play. You won't hear those grace notes before you start. So enter like a, a second or something before the flow starts, and then it will give Dorico time to play those notes. So I think um, I think that's mostly it. There doesn't seem to be any other questions I can see in there. And once again, I've massively extended this session more than I needed to, so apologies, but hopefully it's useful. I will put time links in the description underneath so you can hopefully jump to the right sections uh, if you need to refer back to this video in the future. And if you've got comments about, you know, it would be great if you could do this or that feature uh, in future, or here's this example I've got of something, can you please show us in a session how you would approach this or, you know, this tricky example, then please do send me an email, discoverdorico, so discoverdorico is all one word, so discoverdorico at steinberg.de, uh, and I will then attempt to answer those questions, hopefully, uh, see what I can do. So, uh, the official length is more often an hour than half. Yeah, I should give up. The official length of these sessions is an hour. There you go. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll read some of these uh, comments if there are any uh, as we're ending the session now. Um, thank you all for watching. And, um, you know, like I said, send, send me an email in the month. Uh, let's uh, see what we're going to talk about next month. So thank you all for watching. See you next time.